Run free and dive into the sky. Hear the wind crying out its prayer. Hey, I'm making this video to showcase all the DPS setups I'm using and I think are best in slot for VTS hard mods. They are like mostly setups that everyone in UA used for the world first Smash Buckler Supreme and to get this mount that you can see here with this Radiant Apex twin. Uh, first of all, as classy as you can that I sign on Stam Crew right now. I think this is the best class in there. It's just doing really good of a role. This is mostly a cliff trial, so stacking a lot of AoE is important. Making Necro and Warden the two obvious choices here. Sork is a good class this patch, but it's too much single target oriented in my opinion. It's not gonna be good enough on trash and on boss 2. And even on boss 3 you will have like a single target, but you're gonna like not cliff B most at all, so it's gonna be problematic. And DK isn't bad, but damage is just inferior and sustain is too bad. Nightblade is like Necro but worse. Templar can be really good, like in there with as a blight. But overall, I would like favor Necro over pretty much anything else. Uh, okay, so generally I'm using um, TF Mundus, and I think in a not a subjective you want to use by stat everywhere. It can save you one second boss if you grid too much stacks or in trash if you get targeted. You mostly want to use Ares and pots, allowing you to sustain both Stam and Mag. Okay, so let's start with Trash Setup. I'm using Solxan on body, like all 7 medium pieces, and with Binding Spell with Bagbar. Solxan is a very, very great set for Trash, like the crit damage is really nice, it has minor slayer, and burning spell weave is like a very good backbar set. You can either use burning spell weave or briar heart, but I prefer burning spell weave for the lower cooldown, even if briar heart has better front bar stats. Surksan act as well as a nice pre-buff for bosses, and right now you don't need any source of pen, like the pen CP and like the pen given by supports will be enough. Skill wise you are using the magic archer, because the uh, stamina one is extremely retarded on bosses, it's not targeting the right target most of the time, so you go for the magmorph in trash and just cut it on bosses. Uh, in my opinion, Kilt is still the best mythic on trash. You can use Sea Serpent Coil, but it's not practical because you are gonna most likely be late for the next pack. Uh, Azelheim Dual Wield as well is, like, in my opinion, like the best from variable set stat wise. You can use Black Rose Real World, but you can be more tanky, but it's gonna be less damage. Uh, for safety, you can also go for Master 2 under. And you, you spam Carve. But to be fair, like it's really it makes you really, really tanky, but damage is still gonna be lower. CB wise, you want Exploiter and Force of Nature. Pretty much, Lakosa is just biting and Master Atom's classic. Make sure to have someone in your team using the Necro's eyes to block off balance on everything. As a Necro with Ares and Bots and Pillager and Necrotic Potency, you will be able to ult a lot on Trash. You need to find an ult rotation that fits your group speed well. And I'm using an Aquity Trash setup with Coral Body, Balorg, and Aquity Front Bar, pretty classic. It's nothing special, but it's nice to have like an acuity setup for big burst on like big pack. For example, the one right before Ashmota is the one right after second boss, or the one right before last boss. It's totally optional, but it's really big damage. Your bars are pretty classic uh, necro trash bars. Uh, you have like a blast bones, deadly cloak, proxy, and nature as pre-buff. Like look, you go into your pack, you group proxy, archer, cloak. And then you, you aim for your target, you do your plasmons, and then you do wall, one yard, and you spam, spin to win your chiller, pack is dead. If you have destro, however, you want to destro as soon as possible. 
because vaccines are, are actually really fast, like most of the time it's gonna die in like four, maybe five GCDs. So you want to really like optimize the, your destro as much as you can, so prioritize your destro over anything else if you have it. Okay, on first boss I would do Coral Tovin. This is with C7 Coil and as you can see like pretty much normal the cross setup. You most likely want Coral over Relay to maximize Atro Cleave and Sokvin for the same reason. You don't really want to cast trap in this stressed moment, you know, when your supports have like a lot of Atros to deal with. You just want to maximize like AoE spells and spam spin to in. Uh, it's also giving you a free slot that you can use to put camo double bar, which allows you to run the Arisen pots and spam Meteor and sustain Orb. Uh, you can attack. I have Force of Nature here. Uh, I think it's really good there because you know when your supports splits, uh, you're gonna have most likely lack of pen, and you're gonna have lack of pen on Atros anyway because they don't have Crusher. So it's just nice to have. It's gonna give you more damage than any other CP you could slot here. Uh, what's make C seven call really good here is that most likely, like as Necro, you will have to take Aura at some point, and Aura is dealing you like constant damage, which is like perfect for C seven call up time. And the fact that he's giving major courage is like really huge because most of the time your courage up time will be really low due to like the group splitting, so you can compensate because of that. Like it makes it just a really solid mythic here most likely better than killed even if you don't have perfect time on it. Skills are like pretty much very classic, you can just notice that I'm spamming spin to win. I think it's better than silver shard here, like in most of your GCDs, like when you're gonna use a spammable, it's gonna be like when archers are around and low HP or dogs and shit and it's gonna help a lot to finish them off. It's also an execute which is like less useful now, now that nerfed first boss execute, but before it was really huge. And even now to best, it can always be useful to be able to kill a boss fast. The general idea about like this setup is that this you, do, you don't need like to push single target on this boss because the only moments where you need damage is like it's AoE moments, pretty much. Like it's when the receiver shows up and you need to kill them to allow your tongue to survive. So you want to, even if like most of this fight is single target actually, you still want to optimize AoE. It's like what is gonna make the fight like clean and stable. Uh, for minis now, it's extremely similar as you can see. They are cleansing dots when they are jumping, so you don't want to focus on dot rotation, you just want to abuse spin to win. It's extremely straightforward, like, there is nothing to say here, kinda. Just make sure to keep up Deadly Cloak, it can save you on both mini fights. Okay, mm. now for Rift Guardian. It's gonna be still extremely similar. Same build. And pretty much only things that change here are, like, skill bars and CPs. This time you want to use Silver Shard over Spin to win. like, to be honest you can use both, but I prefer Silver Shard because, like, the fact that it's range allows you to, like, a way more permissive play playstyle. You can, like, position yourself pretty much wherever you want, like, without having to deal with so much stacks and shit. It's, like, a really good quality of life thing. Uh, it's also allowing you to like not having to stand between bosses if there is like a lot of speeds, it's really nice. It's definitely better if you are going portal, or if you know if you, you know you are like backup team for portals. I saw some people using like fire staff back bar, but I think it's a mistake. I think you really want like stampede isn't like that huge because area isn't that great, but carve is actually really nice. Like the shield from carve is like really huge on these fights. Like it allows you to be like so much safer, like if you go downstairs without getting slotted or just like when going to a new position. It's just really nice in my opinion. As you can see, I don't have common or back bar slotted. It's because I would advise to go back to normal stamina potions on this fight. You don't need the reason pot here. Because sustained by suffering is poked by all like lightning and poison dots you are getting. 
So you actually don't need everything pots anymore to suicide orb. But if you don't want to switch potions and or if you want to try to like spam meteor as much as possible, just remove Calchop, it's your weakest dots, and put Carbon Hunter back bar instead. I really think that the crit back bar is worth it to remove Calchops. As you can see I have expert evasion as well. I mean it's not needed, it's just that it's always nice that you know when you can run like lost time because of coral and but you need to do a roll dodge to don't like go from like image let's say you are at four stacks and you're gonna go to it's expiring like two seconds and you're gonna go to five but you would like to do a roll dodge but you don't have enough stam and it's a situation that happened to me a lot and having this CP actually is really really nice like being able to always roll dodge when you need like for kiting reasons and just allowing you to like have a really good coral without getting punished is just really nice in my opinion if you are going portal you can remove caltrops and put the coil instead, like the mortal coil morph. It's a really good healing, like probably better than Vigor because it's free. Usually Vigor is better, but in this specific situation you would like to sustain most of the time. Uh, you can stuck with uh, CC upon coil for portal. You just need to make sure that, like downstairs, you, have you have to not s like slack in the green area because uh, CC upon coil works in a like very specific way, like. Uh, about like the stacking of snare, like for example on Davintas, if you go, uh, if you are in a negate with CC upon coil, your character just cannot move. You cannot even roll dodge. You cannot move anymore. Like you just start snared for 100%, and you cannot do anything about it. Uh, it can happen downstairs as well, so you need to be really careful. You don't stay in two AOEs, because if it happens, you are most likely dead. But as long as you are careful about that, you can use it because guilt is really bad downstairs. Like the crap is gonna like attack you most of the time. So, I would stick with with coil or you know in worst case if you want to be safer you can go high third. And for last boss, it's a little bit different. Uh, I think Relic Queen is the play here, like Relic Queen Pillar, uh, because you don't like really want to lower your stamina, like with coral, and. Like on this fight, engage is like really important. Like you want to, you want to get a good last boss. You need to push it like really fast. You need to don't lose any DPS because if you lose DPS, you're gonna get like decent timing of tornado, and you will need to run around several times, and just your fight is gonna be completely fucked. You really want to optimize your engage, and the thing is, you cannot allow yourself to lower your stamina with coral because otherwise you're just gonna die. So Relicone is just probably better in my opinion, and like even damage wise, they are so similar. Like I don't think you will ever get better result with Coral anyway. You want a Pillar of Neon here because, uh, like you know when you go into water with the Deluge mechanic, you're gonna lose your set stacks like your Kita or Kinoas, and it's pretty shit. So it's why it's usually just why Pillar is better. It's because you're not gonna lose it. So like. Pillar on this fight is always gonna be better than the Kinra or Yukeda who is like 80% of time. Or, or even less sometimes. Mm, skill wise, uh, you cannot do dot rotation here because your siphon is gonna break every time you are turning around, like during the winter storm mechanic. So you have silver shard, and it can be also really nice to finish the raids. You can just like you know spam them front range instead of having to stomp it on them and taking the risk on, or of getting cleaved or something like this. You can notice I have Vigor there. It's not mandatory, but I feel like it's always nice. Like like going portal, having Vigor is just nice. You know, in case you get like attacked by Nerid on the way or you know just to survive. Like when you come back or as you are far from the group, or you know like if your group like. Uh, let let's say you have a you have a maelstrom during a purple area. It's just really nice to be able to just pop a vigor and like just not die, and helps tank a bit with like all the pressure he's taking from Beamos and the purple hat at the same time. But if you want, you can just remove it. It's pretty much just a safer option in my opinion. You can notice that I'm not using air pots here as well. Uh, I don't feel like it's useful. Like honestly, trap is a really good dot here. There is no real point like going to Vin and removing it just to gain orb and like one meteor more into the fights. I just I don't see it worth it personally. 
Chop is gonna do more damage at what your Meteor is gonna do over the fight. And can Chop there has a very similar damage per cast and orb anyway. CP wise, as you can see, I have Expert Evasion and Slippery. These two CPs are like really, really useful. They can, I mean, I really think they will save your life a lot of time. Slippery is like the auto break free one. Let me show you. Uh, yeah. Like, when the Nerid is gonna mind control you, uh, most of the time, I mean, not most of the time, but like pretty often, you're gonna be like out of resources and having this CP to auto break free you to don't like fuck your sustain or just like allow you to break free when you shouldn't, usually, is gonna save your life a lot of time. Same thing with expert evasion. Like, in a lot of situations, like, you will be in like a behemoth slam and you need to roll dodge out, like, you will be like close to water during a yellow area and you need to roll dodge into water to don't bomb the group or like Talaria is doing a crushing wave but you don't have time to dodge and the number of times that this CP is gonna save you is actually incredible I really advise you to run it in worst case see it as a good sustained tool it's gonna allow you to get better stamp control uh, and for console I would do pretty standard setup like Tokvin and Coral and body it's pretty much like the focus of everything what is good on Nexu on this trail. It's like, you know, like setup designed to be good bo on both trash and bosses, so you want to use like the most versatile stuff possible. So you go Coral, you go Sokvin, you go Kilt. And you have Pensipi, of course. On Trash, you probably, if you have time, you can slot Spin 2 in front bar and Necrotic Potency back bar, and then you go back to this on bosses. You can eventually like slot figure or coil pack bar if you are going portal or like on Talia or something. Mm, I think that's pretty much it. I said everything that I think is relevant there. If you have any question, just let me know in comments and I will answer. Uh, I hope I helped you and see ya. Have a good day. Don't forget to like, subscribe and have a nice day.